Bloodworks does a lot of vital things simultaneously. So we're an organization that collects, processes, and distributes blood real time, every day, for patients who need it right now. And then the research is uh, combined with that to try to address the things we can't do right now. Over 200,000 units of blood are donated a year through Bloodworks. Those units certainly go on to save lives of recipients. They also are a huge advantage to our researchers because our researchers have access to those units. They can watch them age, they can take samples from them, and make sure that what they are seeing in the laboratory can also be seen in actual practice. The basic work is more abstract. Uh, we're looking for mechanistic understanding of things that will ultimately affect human disease. The clinical research is taking those findings into, into humans and seeing how that technology can be applied and then answering back to us and saying, okay, this worked, that didn't, what can we do? And so it's really a back and forth uh, interplay, bench to the bedside and back again, which is an ongoing narrative. There's a lot of interest in personalized medicine now and an opportunity to understand why certain patients respond better to some therapies or others or what would be the best therapy for a patient. And we can begin to address that by having genetic information, having other types of biological samples and results, having clinical information. As research has been done here, and new technologies have come online here, the ability to cure cancer at, at the hutch through bone marrow transplantation, the ability to resuscitate trauma victims in, uh, from accidents and for our military uh, exploded, but it started here. When there's a good group of people working together on a project in a setting that provides them all the equipment, all the support that they need, miraculous things happen. And when I step into our research institute, I can feel that. To have someone succeed in science and really answer the questions that we want to be answered, you have to have that environment for them to grow up in. We really need those investigators to make the discoveries of tomorrow. I think it's really important to remember that blood as a therapy, and again, it's the most common therapy people receive, it starts as an altruistic donation by a volunteer. It's processed by non-for-profit organizations, and it's transfused into recipients who need it as a, as a life-sustaining measure. There's no big profit margin here. There's no budget for research and development. And what that means is that the traditional means of generating resources is absent. About two-thirds of the funding comes through NIH, or federal grants and federal contracts. This is a very competitive arena that has had its funding base restricted over the past decade. And that means that our researchers have to be at the very top of not only their game, but the national game. So you basically have to make it absolutely certain that you're going to succeed. Well, not all science succeeds. And to make those pivotal, innovative discoveries, you need to have a little freedom to be able to explore something new. So the community support is absolutely essential to continuing the Research Institute's trajectory to success. As we move forward, it's not just improving on the life-saving transfusions we can currently give. It's modifying those technologies into cellular therapies, into gene therapies. We can take cells that we normally collect for transfusion now and engineer them into disease-curing vehicles themselves. Bloodworks and organizations like it that marry together the basic science with the collection, distribution, and transfusion to the patient populations, without that kind of internal dialogue, without that kind of um, cooperative narrative, the work simply can't get done. So having places like this, and there aren't that many of them, uh, is essential and it's special beyond words. <laughs>